reach out and touch the Lord as He passes by. You'll find He's not too busy to hear your cry. He's passing by this moment, your needs to supply. Reach out. Tonight, let's take our Bibles and turn in the Old Testament to the book of Psalms, Psalm 148, Praise the Lord. Tonight, the Lord willing, we're going to be finishing our study of the Psalms, and uh, I'm rather sad about having to complete this study because I've enjoyed it so much. My favorite course in all of five years of seminary was going through Psalms and doing my own a commentary on it. I've long since lost all that uh, paperwork, but it was such a great time. And well, you do your own commentary. Uh, get up tomorrow morning and start with Psalm 1, and uh, let's see what the Lord can do with refreshing your spirit. Uh, these are the songs of Israel. This is the hymn book of Israel. And uh, we've gone through a wonderful array of expressions of praise and petition and uh, prayer, but we close on a very strong praise note, which is very fitting. Uh, these three psalms are among the strongest we have of invitations to praise the Lord. So we're going to divide the program into two uh, for the television audience, and um, I invite you to be uh, here with us for the whole program. So let's bow our hearts in the Lord. Father, we're grateful for this chance to study your word. We love to praise you, Lord, but teach us how to praise you even more with a sincere heart, with a, just a heart from the Spirit. Uh, this will be our, our lifelong expression for eternity, uh, forever and ever, of praising you. So let's get a head start on it now and really, really love to praise you, morning, noon, and night. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Psalm 148, praise to the Lord from creation. Here the psalmist is exhorting heaven and earth to praise the Lord. It's almost like the, the psalmist is a conductor. You've all seen, I'm not sure if you've been to classical uh, or orchestral uh, presentations, you've seen them on television, you know what a conductor does. Stands up on the podium and has the baton and directs the instruments. Well, I kind of feel like the psalmist is doing the same thing here, but instead of a 66-piece orchestra, here we are directing all of creation, heaven and earth. And uh, it seems far-fetched, and yet this is going on and will go on as we get into heaven. The moment you pass into heaven, I haven't been there yet. Uh, my mother did go there and then came back and told me about it. Um, but for those who have gone and come back, uh, you'll be involved with worship. You're going to be involved with uh, celebrating the goodness of the Lord. And we know about that from our Revelation study of chapter 4 and 5. Um, so creation is expressing praise to God right now. So let's begin with verse 1 as we talk about praise from the heavens. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all His hosts. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you stars of light. Praise Him, you heavens of heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He also established them forever and ever. He made a decree which shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all the depths, fire and hail, snow and clouds, stormy wind fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills, fruitful trees and all cedars, Beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying fowl, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above the earth and heaven, and he has exalted the horn of his people. The praise of all his saints, of the children of Israel, a people near to him. Praise the Lord. 
Praise the Lord is the opening and also the closing of this psalm, as it is in others, especially toward the end of this book. And we know that as hallelujah. Interestingly, hallelujah is a word that is known and used in every language in the world, we're told. Don't need to have a translation of it. I used to say hallelujah was the only universal word known to man but then I realized that Coca-Cola probably is too. <laughs> TikTok, unfortunately, and others. But uh, hallelujah is universal, and it means praise the Lord, doesn't it? So praise the Lord, verse 1, praise the Lord from the heavens. And that's what's going on right now in heaven. There's praise. Whether it's a formal praise meeting or whether praise is just such a part of life that it's always going on, we know there is the formal setting in the throne room of God. Revelation 4 and 5 tell us about that. We see the 24 elders representing the church. We see the four living creatures and the hosts of, of humanity and of angels there praising God. But I wonder what it's like in the everyday activity in heaven if there's praise incorporated just in the goings and the comings and the working and the serving of the daily life. And I would imagine so. I would imagine so because God really wants that to be for us as well. If it's just the throne room, then it's just like tonight and then Sunday morning, and that's it. We just praise the Lord at our services. No, we praise the Lord really all the time. He wants us to praise in our going and our coming, getting up in the morning and saying, thank you, Jesus. There are advantages to being single because you've got a lot of peace and quiet, but there are advantages to marriage as well. And the advantage to marriage for me is when I get up in the morning, I like to kind of move into the day slowly and I'm starting to do my duties of cat litter box duty and dog duty and all, and I'm focusing on the duty. But my wife gets up and she focuses on praise, opens up with Psalm 91 and just starts to bless the Lord and praise the Lord. And she kind of directs my thinking back into praise. Now she's working, she's doing things. It's not a formal praise and worship session. Praise is a part of life for her and it should be for us as well. Going and coming, driving, even speaking with people. How about if you and I were to talk to somebody on the phone or even to text and say, hey, let, let's just stop for a moment. Or there you're at a restaurant and just stop for a moment. Let's just praise the Lord. Let's just praise the Lord and thank him for all of his goodness. How about interrupting normal conversations and just say, let's thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We ought to make praise a, really a part of our lives all the time. Praise the Lord from the heavens. I know the heavens are praising God even now. Praise him in the heights. Praise him all his angels. The angels praise him. Not all the angels. The ones that didn't praise him, of course, rebelled. And we'll be talking about that on Sunday in Revelation about Satan and his followers, angels that became demonic spirits. But the ones who have remained faithful to the Lord, they're worshiping the Lord as well. Praise him, all his hosts. Hosts can refer to the angels, can also refer to all those who are now with him, including this psalm writer, including David, whoever else was writing these different psalms. Praise him, sun and moon. How does the sun and moon praise him? By its very existence. By its very existence. Praise him, all you stars of light. By their very existence. They're out there tonight. They're out there Every night, can't always see it, but it's there. Praise him, you heavens of heavens. What is heaven? A lot of discussion about that. Some say there are seven heavens. Never quite figured that out. Uh, I like the simple Hebrew understanding of three heavens. We've talked about that a lot. First heaven we see, you saw it uh, uh, today, the birds flying in the air. It's the immediate at atmosphere right around us. The second heaven is further out, that's the sun, the moon, the stars, the constellations. But the third heaven, of course, is the throne room of God, and it's heavens of heavens. And then waters above the heavens. Well, I thought all the water was released in the flood. Well, apparently not. This was written long after the flood, so there's still waters up there, and of course we know that because we know about rain that develops into the, in the, in the clouds, etc. So even the waters are speaking of God's creation. All of creation speaks of him. And the value of that is, first of all, it's for our enjoyment. And uh, when I go out into the woods with the dogs, I, I walk, I have a little pedometer on my phone, and 
I average about, because of walking the dogs, I average about four miles a day. And um, it's always outdoors in the parks, and I just enjoy it. I feel so comfortable, and I'm thinking, well, yes, I'm getting back to nature. But I'm wondering if maybe there is more praise going on in that environment than I know. I wonder if my dogs, in a way, are praising God because they're happy and they're, they're in their natural element. I wonder, are the trees involved in, in worship at that time? The grass? Uh, the hills, maybe that's why I like being outdoors uh, rather than walking through some dull museum. Um, so they're all there to praise God. So praise is going on all around us. And this is important because we know that creation not only is for our pleasure and also exhibits praise to God, but pray, but the nature becomes a uh, testimony and a witness and even a sermon for salvation. The Apostle Paul talks about this in Romans chapter 1 and indicates that we should be looking at creation and be able to see that God has created this heaven and earth and that that should lead us to an understanding of and submission to and worship of Him as God. So they're not with, the, no, there's no excuse. They might not have heard the actual gospel, but creation itself should speak to them about a God who should make them seek Him and we know that as one seeks for light, God will give light. Um, and he goes, I'm just going to just read a verse or so. Verse uh, 20 of chapter 1 of Romans. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. So if you look at creation, you realize that this is not just something that happened. This didn't come out of the primordial ooze or some other creation, the Big Bang Theory or whatever theory they're teaching these days. So creation itself witnesses about God's power and God's existence. And then, then of course, you have children. My stepfather, um, Mort, was a, an Orthodox Jew turned atheist. And uh, as an atheist, uh, in his first marriage to his, his first wife, who died... Uh, shortly after the birth of her two children. Um, when the first child, Diana, came out of the womb, uh, in those days, the, the men did not go into the delivery room to witness it, but when he saw his child, he instantly realized that there had to be a God. He saw that little perfect baby and realized that his atheism had to go out the window. So the birth of a child led him to understand there is a God and a lifelong pursuit to find who this God was. And uh, for a little boy at eight years of age who was beaten up as a Jewish boy and called a Christ killer, well, he then became one who loved Christ and eventually served even as a, a pastor here at the church. So um, creation praises God and uh, get up in the morning tomorrow morning and just in case the trees are asleep or the, the grass is not quite awake yet because of the springtime, get up in the morning and say, come on guys, let's praise the Lord. Birds up there in the trees, let's praise the Lord. Come on, dogs, let's thank Jesus. And get everybody around you praising him. Well, verse 5, let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He also established them forever and ever. He made a decree which shall not pass away. So praise the name of the Lord. And what is his name? Well, we know him as Jesus, Yahweh. primarily Yahweh. We've got many names for him, a hundred names for the Father at least, uh, and a hundred names for the Holy Spirit, a hundred names for Jesus, but he's the Lord. And um, just praise him, he's created all that's in heaven and then all that's on earth. So we turn now to verse, the earth, to verse 7 on the earth. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures, and all the depths, fire and hail, snow and clouds, stormy wind, fulfilling his word. Did you ever think about uh, these so-called acts of God, now the insurance company calls them acts of God, uh, the acts of creation, uh, actually praising God, even a stormy wind. They all have a purpose, don't they? Oh, there's too much rain here in Albany the last few days. But if you've been around for a while, you realize you need rain. And uh, if you're here in February and March, we all say with one accord, better to have the rain than to have the snow. So thank God for whatever the conditions are. There, there's a reason for it, even the cloudy days. 
um, all the animals. Praise the Lord. Beasts and all cattle, verse 10, creeping things and flying fowl. One of my jobs in the family, I think, uh, over the last almost 10 years now, has been to uh, introduce to the family a respect for creeping things. Uh, because our, family, our house, like your house, may have an occasional bug. And uh, I came into a culture which would step, smash, uh, strangle, whatever, any bug to get them out of the house, or better yet, get a spray can or call the exterminator. And uh, they began to watch Jerry uh, over these last 10 years um, just respect life. I didn't give life, and I don't want to take life. And uh, God has, has uh, enabled me over the years. When I was in Vietnam and I was kind of bored, I became an expert in killing flies. And I'd sit at my desk and uh, I'd see a fly, and if you saw a fly there, you just go six inches over its head and you clap your hands and he's yours. Because he goes straight up and the timing is perfect. Kill fly after fly after fly. And how do you pass a year in Vietnam? That's one way to do it. So now I'm paying for that the rest of my life in having to rescue flies and rescue uh, ants and what have you. And uh, I've taught the kids how to rescue ants. It's pretty easy with a little flat card. But catch a fly, that's not so easy. And um, so the Lord has taught me over the years, <laughs> not all the time, but most of the time, I'm able to say to a fly, in Jesus' name, come on my hand. And that fly will come on my hand. I know you think I'm nuts by now. And uh, I will gently walk outdoors and then just say, go. And it will fly away. So not that you need to adapt that practice. It may sound silly to some. But uh, they're created beings, and they in their own way praise God. I have a lot of respect for ants. I wish our country ran like a colony of ants. I wish our families ran like ants. And the churches, and what they're all busy. And they're all coordinated. And bees, even the bees, they, they are just, they're just a marvel. And frankly, even dogs, even a pack of dogs. We've got more than one or two dogs, as you know. And they learn how to survive by working together if we could do the same thing, we would be well, be well off. Um, and the Lord taught me this lesson. If you had your eyes on me the way the dogs have them on you, you wouldn't go off track the way you do at times. So keep your eyes on Jesus the way your dog keeps his eye on you. Hallelujah. All right. Beasts and cattle, creeping things, flying fowl, kings of the earth and all peoples. Princes and all judges of the earth. I don't care how high you are, how mighty you are, or how low one seems to be. We all need to be praising the Lord. Both young men and maidens, old men and children, all peoples should be praising the Lord. And pray for the younger generations which are falling away from church more than ever. Each generation is. Gen Z is uh, uh, not going to church much at all right now. Um, in fact, Gen Z is identifying 20-some-odd uh, percent with LGBTQ, uh, blah, blah. Um, we need to be uh, praying for our kids to, to praise the Lord. They're like little sponges. Kelly sings to the little grandchildren, or they play their praise music, and they know those songs, and they love those songs about Jesus. Oh, yeah, they just, they really love the Lord. And um, they, they, don't, they don't question anything about uh, whether he's real or not. They just, they know he is. And... Uh, as a matter of fact, well, one of the uh, grandchildren uh, is getting information. I don't know who's downloading to uh, Lily, but she's getting stuff that no human being is giving her, and it's biblical. Uh, apparently, the, she's got a direct pipeline like the Apostle Paul did. <laughs> she's getting some very direct information uh, from the Lord. So uh, all, all kids, you can get them on Jesus. Verse 13 and 14, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. Let's make sure that we're exalting his name and nobody else. Not our name. Let's get over ourselves. It's not about us. Let's get over our political parties. Let's get over our this or that. It's about Jesus. It's about God. Let's not uh, lift up any name but his. It's not about disease. That's not the God of this age. Uh, even though Jesus did call Satan the God of this age because we have made him that from Adam and Eve on, it's really not true because he's our God. The Lord's our God. And um, as far as the prince of the power of the air, yes, Paul called Satan that. But Lord Jesus, clear the airwaves for us to share the message of Jesus Christ. Personal communication. Do we talk about clearing the airwaves for radio and television and uh, all that sort of thing? And yes, that's important. 
but clear the airwaves for you and for me. Tomorrow you're going to go out and you're going to use the airwaves as you speak to people. Clear the airwaves, Lord, so that I can share my gospel testimony with somebody. Somebody at the gas station, somebody at work, somebody here or there. Uh, an opportunity. So when you're talking about uh, getting rid of the prince of the power of the air so that the radio programs are clear and the social media uh, stuff is clear, make sure that your own testimony is clear. Lord, make my way clear today to share my faith. So he has exalted the horn of his people, the strength of his people, the praise of all his saints, of the children of Israel, a people near to him. So he strengthened the horn of Israel. We pray that uh, she'll be strengthened again. She's in the news today as she is every day as our first Jewish uh, uh, senator, Democratic senator, uh, Chuck Schumer is calling for uh, new elections over there in, in Israel to get rid of Netanyahu, who was, he thinks has lost his way. And then the opposition, of course, uh, is saying, who is he to direct what goes on in Israel? And, and on and on go, it's politics, right? In any event, um, we pray for our leaders, pray for our strength, pray for Israel, that she is going to find her way, not only in this temporary situation with Hamas and the war, but more importantly, long-term, in salvation, that she'll come to know Jesus as the Messiah. One day Israel will know her, but it's going to be seven years of tribulation before she gets that revelation. In any event, we close with the words we opened with, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's, let's go to the Lord. Father, help us to make praise a, an important part of our life. Let us not walk around and be concerned about this and uh, worried about that, having the mully grubs about something else. Help us to simply put these matters in your hands, put them on the altar, and walk away praising you and loving you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. He's passing by this moment, your needs to supply.